Friends, it is the first day of December, December 1st, 2020, and the angel has announced to Mary in yesterday's scripture from Luke chapter 1 that uh, she's going to have a baby, that, that God is uh, going to give her the gift of a son, and uh, she is shocked at this. And she says to the angel, how can this be since I am, and then this next word is important, Parthenos. It's interesting, the, this was translated often in previous translations of the Bible as, uh, how can this be since I have no husband? As if she was mainly referring to herself as someone who was just, as if Parthenos meant unmarried. But Parthenos meant virgin, and it, 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 it had a sense of, of youth and also, obviously, of femininity. And so Parthenos has these, these three different d dimensions of ge gender, virginity, and age. And all of these things are, are part of Mary's identity. You know, as a young woman in a male-dominated first century society, uh, she didn't have many resources. She was, she was dependent. There weren't many paths for her to be able to, uh, to earn a living or to uh, be a single mother. And as I mentioned yesterday, the news that she would be pregnant during the betrothal, betrothals were, were uh, the equivalent, or engagements, were the equivalent of marriage legally. So she was considered to be married to Joseph, and the law was very clear. If you became pregnant and he wasn't the father, uh, then uh, she should be publicly shamed, judged at the gate, maybe stoned to death, but certainly rejected by everyone in the village and kind of left outside the camp. So that uh, meant that that this idea of becoming pregnant because of her age, her gender, uh, and her situation as a virgin who was betrothed, all was a, a major threat to her life. Interestingly, she may also have uh, recognized that, you know, the angel talked about her uh, being the, the, the mother of the Messiah, and the Messiah being uh, part of David's royal house. Well, she, her family wasn't Davidic, uh, that wasn't their lineage or their ancestry. That was Joseph's ancestry. So if she was divorced, in what sense would Jesus even be part of the royal lineage? There, was, there were problems with this announcement from her point of view, and yet she's open enough to this strange favor of God that she uh, ultimately responds positively. Let's, um, let's take a moment to pray, and let's today remember that Sometimes the hardest barriers with us being useful to God, being part of his great purposes, have to do not with doubting God so much as doubting ourselves. She must have wondered, can I do this? Do I have the resources? Am I the right age? Am I the right lineage? Sometimes we, our doubts about ourselves are the things that get in the way of us serving God in the wild and wonderful ways that he hopes we will. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, let us not uh, get, our, get in the way of the great things you want to do through us, in us, and for us. Um, you are the God who, who has the strange favor, who sometimes picks the unlikely ones to do great things. We thank you that Mary was chosen, and we thank you that we're going to look into the responses she made this week that uh, have made such a difference in life, in Scripture, and for all of us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Thanks for being here. Amen. Friends, today uh, we are looking at Luke chapter 1, verses uh, 36 through 38, continuing to look at the drama of uh, Mary's encounter with the angel Gabriel, uh, her becoming pregnant through the Holy Spirit, and just how this uh, impacted her, her life. Uh, today is Wednesday, December 2nd, and this passage, uh, it, it, we see that Mary is going to switch, uh, about to switch locations. There's a little hint of it. And we see her response to this uh, announcement. And now, your relative Elizabeth, this is the angel still speaking, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. This is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for, for nothing will be impossible with God. This is a gentle reminder. Remember, Mary has questioned the angel. She's a young girl. She doesn't have the resources. She doesn't have a husband. She's not married. How's this all going to work out, this plan of God? And he reminds her, you know, God can do things you're not expecting. Think of Elizabeth in her senior age, in her uh, super senior retirement, suddenly becoming pregnant after all these years of being barren. God can do incredible things. And Mary responds and says this famous thing. Here I am. 
the servant of the Lord, let it be with, with me according to your word. This is a, a little bit of a convoluted thing in English, but she's saying, yes, yes, I will respond as a servant of the Lord, as an obedient person. Let whatever happens happen to me according to your will and your word. Then the angel departed from her. Well, this is unqualified assent, we might say. It is a, it is a yes with no reservations and no holdback. And this, despite the fact that she must have uh, been anticipating that awkward encounter with Joseph and wondering uh, whether her life would be forfeited, uh, whether she would certainly be divorced and how things would get on from there. Um, single motherhood, first century, what a, what a very, very difficult path. I think sometimes, though, even the prospect of those changes might not have been the most difficult thing for Mary. What must have been most difficult would be letting go of the dream she had, the, the conventional adventure, as I said on Sunday, of motherhood and of family life and of being connected into your clan, into your neighborhood, of raising uh, children, uh, sons and daughters to God's glory, teaching them the faith, passing on the wisdom of the ages. This was her dream. And she had a wonderful man to do it with. He had a steady income as a carpenter. He was, as we learn in this, this story, a very courageous guy, very committed. And so um, that was her dream. And sometimes what gets in the way of us serving God is actually letting go of our plans to make room for his plans. Let's take a minute and pray. Heavenly Father, you've given us imaginations. They're beautiful, powerful things. They allow us to envision futures for ourselves and for others. Help us, our, our imaginations, to be in tune with your will rather than in contradiction to it. Sometimes we have dreams that in, of, and in and of themselves are, good, are for good things and maybe even for holy things, but they're not really what you intend for us. And so help us to trust in those moments when you make your will clear that it is indeed the best and most significant way that we can use our lives, our times, our energy, and our imagination. We ask it through Christ our Lord. Amen.